Shawarai Sopless. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord will speak to your heart. That the word of God will be precious to you. And will manifest its transforming power in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity again to come before you to learn from your word and to hear directly from the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he is the living word. And we pray, Lord, you impart the power in the word to every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Make us come alive for the strength of the Lord, for the power of the Lord. And we pray, Lord, that the entrance of your word will bring great, great light into every heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 5. And at this time we're looking at verses 14 and 15. Jesus Christ was speaking to all the people before him. And seeing the multitudes, he went he up into a mountain and when he was set his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and touched them saying what was Jesus Christ thinking about at the time he gave these words who did he see what did he see yes we know he saw the crouch before him he saw the people before him and he saw the disciples before him but you remember when he was praying for the sanctification of his own disciples he said neither do i pray for these alone but for those who will believe on their on me through their word we understand then that when jesus ministered he was not just ministering on immediate crouch he was ministering also to the people that were believed after them. When he saw the multitudes, yes, he saw the multitude there that day. And he saw the multitude after them. The people that will still come and come and come and listen to the word. And his disciples came unto him. He saw the disciples at that time that came unto him. But he knew until he's coming again disciples disciples will keep on coming unto him and as he opened his mouth he touched them and he's teaching us i want you to understand what then when jesus spoke when jesus taught when jesus ministered he ministered with the understanding not these alone but many others that were here Whenever you minister, you think about that. Here is a teacher in front of you. I mean a school teacher. He hears the word. You minister with the understanding. I am giving him his portion. I'm giving him the portion he will go and give to his students. Here are mothers before you. Yes, we're giving them their portion here. And we're giving them the portion they will go and give to their children. Here are managers, here are directors, here are leaders of corporations. Yes, we're preaching to them, this multitude. But we're also giving them the portion when they go back home that they will give to the people waiting at home. And seeing the multitudes, seeing the immediate, initial multitudes, and then seeing the coming future multitudes. He went up into a mountain. Why did he go up to a mountain? I told you already. If he were in the valley, those who are listening will be looking down into the valley before they can hear him. Now because he went to the mountain top, those who are in the plain or in the valley, to be able to listen to him, you will lift up your eyes and you will look up. And the Lord is saying, you always look up unto him. When he teaches you to mend your life, 
and to mold your life there is always a necessity of looking up looking up to the savior looking up to the lord looking up to the one that molds looking up to the messiah looking up to the mentor and it is in that process of always looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith that you'll be able to develop the characteristic that is painting for us in this passage and then we are told he opened his mouth and he touched them saying blessed are the poor in spirit i thought we had that before yes we did i read of a particular preacher he came this particular sunday and he delivered his message then they went back home he came the following sunday and he delivered exactly the same message word for word reference after reference they went back home he came back the third sunday and he delivered that same message word for word verse after verse chapter after chapter from beginning introduction to conclusion they went back home he came the first sunday he delivered the same message word for word paragraph after paragraph until the final sentence and then they went back home he came the fifth sunday and by this time now the congregation was feeling inconvenient why is our pastor delivering the same message this is the fifth sunday and it's not changing anything it's not changing posture it's not changing reference it's not changing the message and then some of the leaders were getting together what's happening to our pastor then he came the sixth sunday and then when he announced his subject it was still the same subject and then he began and he went through everything after that service on the sixth sunday those uh, leaders supporting pastors they came to him they said pastor we cannot understand this six times now you have preached the same message the same topic the same references the same sentences everything the same why oh he said the purpose of giving the message is for you to practice it is for you to carry it out when i came the first sunday i preached when i came the second sunday i didn't see any change and i knew you need this so he said it to them again and i came second week i didn't see any change third week until now i've not seen any change therefore i'm going to keep on preaching this our students when they go to school until they master the particular subject we're teaching we don't live there and run off to another scene are we not doing like that congregation the things we have learned how many times have we repeated now the words of jesus blessed are the poor in spirit can you say honestly can you testify in the sight in the presence of god in the presence of man that since you started hearing blessed are the poor in spirit you are more humble today than on tuesday when we started can you say you are more gentle today you are more lowly today and you are more uh, you are more enduring today than you did on wednesday can you say what you have been hearing blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of god has anything changed in your attitude in your comportment in your lifestyle in your honoring the lord in your reverencing the lord the attitude you have to worship and the attitude you have to the word of god and the attitude you have to ministry has anything changed that's why we're repeating the words of jesus blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn blessed are they that mourn yes you heard it before you have had it since i started the series i read it every time but do you mourn and i've said over and over that those who do wrong should not become heroes in the kingdom of god we should not exalt 
lift up, appreciate, congratulate the pseudo evil. When there is sin in the family, when there's spiritual sickness in the family, we mourn. When your children come back home and they bring report sheets back that show that they are at the bottom of the class. You know they are sharp brain. And you know they could do what they ought to do if they wanted to. If they don't do it and they are failures, you mourn. You don't have appetite. You call your children. You don't call them to laugh and to smile. You mourn. In the family of God, when those who have been in the church in Christ for years, 10 years, 15 years, when they became, when they behaved like kindergarten believers, you mourn. And so Jesus said, Blessed are they which mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Since you have been hearing this, have you prayed that the Lord Himself? will drop this meekness and gentleness of Christ in your heart, in your comportment, in your lifestyle. Blessed are they, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. At righteousness, this church, are we thirsty at righteousness? Or are we thirsty at activity? You know me, you know when I preach. And you know, do you see why I'm very specific when I preach? You know, sometimes if you throw something and the fellow doesn't know you are throwing it at him, he will not catch it. You know, those people that those are young people who are playing football, they have somebody at a goal post. And then when they are kicking the ball, there's somebody there. And that fellow at the goal post knows that you are sending the ball to him and he's ready to catch it. That's why I do what I do. That when you are there, if I just preach and say, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. You don't know that you are at the goalpost, that I'm throwing it at you. Blessed are they that thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. That the number one thing and the priority is not good music. And I want our pastors there to understand. Don't exalt music above holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what we're dying for. And that's what I've suffered for all these years. And so music people, if you really want to continue your music ministry, blessed are they that thirst at a righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, all of us who are here, and I said whether you are ushers, whether you are security, I know your security and your soldier people, soldiers are fathers. This is your father. And whether you are in the security or anywhere you are, as your father, I should be able to tell you that blessed are they which thirst and hunger at a righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that's, that means then the passion of our heart in this church. Now your ministry is secondary The number one thing Is follow peace with all men And holiness without which No man shall see the Lord And so Jesus said Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst At a righteousness For they shall be filled Blessed are the merciful For they shall obtain mercy Blessed are the pure in heart For they shall see God Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is, it is therefore uh, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. 
ye are the light of the world a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house ye are the light of the world as savior lord jesus christ said i am the light of the world john chapter 9 in john chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 5 as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world but now he says to the disciples to the believers ye are the light of the world what christ is to the world we are called to be as well was this a totally new idea a totally new concept no not at all even in the old testament this revelation was clear god is light and his people were called to be light in psalm 27 verse 1 psalm 27 i'm reading verse 1 the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid you see that's the old testament it says the lord is my light first john in first john chapter one verse five first john chapter one verse five this then is a message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all god is light in him is no darkness at all in second samuel chapter 21 second samuel chapter 21 reading verse 17 second samuel 21 verse 17 but abishai the son of zeruiah succored him and smote the philistines and killed him then the men of david swear unto him saying thou shalt go no more out with us to battle that thou quench not the light of israel david was referred to as the light the light of israel if philistine wanted to kill him but then abishai came and finished that philistine then all the men of david came together and said you are getting older you will not go to battle with us anymore because if they kill you you will quench the light of israel you see we are called to be light in first kings chapter 11 first kings chapter 11 verse 36 in first kings 11 36 and unto his son will i give one try that david my servant may have a light always before me in jerusalem that's the son of david being referred to as light and then we come to romans chapter 2 verse 19 romans chapter 2 verse 19 and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind a light of them which are in darkness all over the scriptures then old testament and new testament each one of us representing christ is called to shine with his light and influence our world with radiant living influence our world with radiant living i divide the message to three parts number one reflecting christ's light reflecting christ's light number two radiant christian living radiant christian living number three renewed consistent life renewed consistent life number one reflecting christ's light 
as we look at the first part of Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 ye are the light of the world ye are the light of the world as it says and the Lord says ye are the light of the world what's the, what's the implication of that he is the light and we reflect his light John chapter 1 verse 4 and it was light and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there was a man sent from God whose name was John the same came for a witness to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe he was not that light but was sent to be a witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world Christ is the true light and then he lighteth every man he gives light to every man that comes into the world and then as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he lightens and he, and he gives you light you reflect the light of Christ in John chapter 8 verse 12 John 8 verse 12 then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have, shall have the light of life. Shall have the light of life. You see, when you come to the Lord and you are linked up by grace, by faith. Through the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, you are linked up with Jesus, the light of the world. Then you will not walk in darkness anymore because you have the light. In John chapter 12, John 12, verse 36. John chapter 12, verse 36. While ye have light, believe in the light that she may be the children of light you see your coming to christ makes you to have this intimate relationship with christ the light it says while you have him and while you have opportunity of believing in him believe that she may be the children of light verse 46 i am come a light into the world that you serve believers on me should not abide in darkness see what the lord is telling us is telling us that as we believe in him we do not remain in darkness ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 we are then to reflect the light of the lord jesus christ ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 for ye were sometimes darkness ye were in the past before you knew the lord but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light when you come to believe on the lord jesus christ darkness passes away the darkness of ignorance all that will pass away and the darkness of sinning all that will pass away and now you walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth romans chapter 13 in Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is past page. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light because now we come to the lord we're born again we're converted we have been poor in spirit we have mourned for the rebellion disobedience and sin in the family in the community and in the land we have become meek and gentle humble and lowly not only that we are passionately sought after the righteousness and the purity of heart and life and then we we'll become merciful and we we'll become pure in heart and then we we'll become peacemakers 
because of all those experiences we had in the Lord and with the Lord. It says the bottom line, the conclusion, the corollary to that. And uh, uh, what follows after that is that now we put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Now, when he said in verse 12, cast off the works of darkness. What's the work of darkness? That's what he says in verse 13. Rioting. Rioting. It's the work of darkness. You know what they do in the world? Whenever the uh, leadership in the world, maybe the political leaders, Whenever they are taking a decision that the, um, the people in the land don't think that they want to agree with, they, only, they know only one way to turn the leadership away from the path they are taking, and it's royalty. But there are many other ways. There's dialogue. There's talking together. There's writing. And the newspapers are there that you can use. And they could bring out, you know, reasons why this should not be. And write in an appealing way. Or they could send delegates to the leadership. They could do that. But they will not do that. And they will not allow dialogue to make any change in the policies in their country. They will rather riot and destroy things that are worth millions of their currency. Before, whether the government will change or not, already lives are destroyed already many many bad things would have happened and the lord is saying in the church we cast off the works of darkness and part of the work of darkness is royalty if you feel that the leadership is taking a decision or is making a policy or is having a particular practice it's not a simple thing it's just that maybe you feel the policy is not convenient maybe there's an alternative dialogue dialogue you can come uh, we have counseling sessions and uh, uh, you're straightforward you're not acting like uh, you know the emissary of Joab what I mean by emissary of Joab um, you know David had disciplined Absalom because Absalom had to run away when he orchestrated the killing of one of the sons in the family and then he ran away and Job wanted to get at the heart of David and instead of coming directly and saying king we understand we agree with you in fact you have even tried normally anybody who kills another one like Absalom did he should have been killed and you have the authority and the power to have taken that young man to just kill him all it's not above the law but you allow him to live and now he's in the other places you have shown this mercy halfway david king with all due respect this is dialogue why don't you get him back and allow him to be his son again in the family joab didn't do that and joab employed a woman and put words in her mouth to tell lies and to cook up story and then came to David and said this, this and this. David was not a psychologist. But David had the spirit of God. And said woman tell me the truth. I'm asking you a question. This story you are telling me. Is not the hand of Joab in this. And that woman said. My lord O oh king. You are as an angel of God. Joab put these words in my mouth. We know. When that is done, we're not that stupid, we're not that foolish, we're not that dark. But why don't you come directly? Why do we use the methods of the people of the world? Why do you have to use the method of Joab? And it doesn't work. And you see, when you do that, and you're talking to an intelligent leader, and I know that this is Joab's servant, this is Joab's slave, you don't have a mind of your own, it's Joab that sent you to come and tell me that, and that's not sincere. That's why we don't respond to all those emissaries of Job. Don't let there be any rioting. Walk as children of light. And then he also talks about drunkenness. When he talks about drunkenness, it's not only alcohol. Ideas can make you drunken. An opinion. You can become drunk of an opinion that will become you are beside yourself. 
that you are not able to act normal anymore because you are drunk with that opinion not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envy not in strife it's the work of darkness let us cast off the works of darkness and then put on the armor of light what's the armor of light is in verse 13 let us walk honestly let's be honest with one another hey, don't you see the way i relate with you when i have something against the choir i tell them if i if they don't hear when i tell them in private i tell them in public why am i doing it in public so that you will be a peacemaker you'll go to your friends there and you'll tell them what this pastor is saying he wants you to get to heaven i don't do my own things dishonestly if i'm not happy with the situation i tell the whole church this is not right follow me copy me and be honest as i'm honest with you and don't have this backhanded kind of doing things let us put on then the ammo of light and let us walk honestly so that we'll be reflecting the light of christ every believer experiences a radical change a radical transformation from darkness to light what a transformation that is we reflect the light of christ number one light penetrates and eliminates darkness you see when you become a child of god and this light of the gospel is in you the light in you will eliminate darkness by penetrating into your community number two light enlightens and enlarges a person's vision and knowledge of an area you are in an area and there's no light there you will not know you'll not have knowledge of all the things that are there but when the light comes then that light will enlarge your vision and will enlighten you to be able to see everything around be a, be a light that when you're in a particular community the holiness they didn't see before the gentleness they didn't see before and uh, the lifestyle they have not known before through you because you are light they'll be able to see number three light reveals and opens up the truth light reveals and opens up the truth of an area and clears up the way to the truth when you are light you clear the way for people to oh this is the true thing and then your life will point to that truth number four light guides and directs the way you go and leads along the right path light guides and directs the way you go and leads along the right path number five light differentiates between the right way and the wrong way you wouldn't know the right way or the right or the wrong way if the light didn't shine on your path when you are at a crossroad if you didn't if the sign bush directing you to this is what this place will lead to that's what that place will lead to if there was no light to read all those signs you wouldn't know the way to take be a light and let your life guide people in the right direction number six light warns us of the dangers that lie ahead a person's path if there's a ditch in front it's the light that makes you to see that if there is any danger something that could destroy your life is a light that makes you to see that and your life shall be light unto people so that your life will be a sign of warning to them so that through your life they will see the dangers ahead number seven light protects a person from the dangers of darkness from stumbling from falling from injuring himself ye are the light of the world number two radiant christian living matthew chapter five again in matthew chapter five matthew chapter five i'm reading from verse 14 the second part of verse 14 a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid a city that is set on an hill cannot be everybody from every direction will be able to look up at that city set on a hill because it is not hidden and that's what the christian ought to be 
that your life ought to be a radiant life a plain life a clear life that other people can see and they can light their little candles from your light and they can sh they can go the right direction from the way the lord is leading you in life that you will be like that city that is set on a hill and then your life will be useful influential on other people john chapter 5 john chapter 5 verse 35 he was a burning and a shining light. That's John the Baptist. He was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Our lives should so influence people that they will rejoice to take after us. They will rejoice to live like we live. They will rejoice to follow our footsteps. Burning light, a shining light. Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11 reading from verse 13 all through to verse 17 job 11 verse 13 if thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him if iniquity be in thine hand put it far away and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles for then shalt thou lift up thine face without sport yea thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday and thou shalt shine forth and thou shalt be as the morning you see when you get rid of sin in your life and the blood of jesus washes you and cleanses you and puts your feet in a new direction a new path it says now that your age will be clearer than the noonday that is the light shining in the mid midday and thou shalt shine forth and thou shalt be as the morning i pray it will happen to you that your life now will be lived for the light of the gospel and that light of the gospel will influence other people around you you'll be holding forth the word of life in philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 Philippians 2 verse 14 Do all things without murmurings and disputings Do all things without murmurings and disputing. What does that mean? I'm sure you know what that means Whatever you are doing in the church You ask fellowship leader Do it without murmuring Do it without disputing Do it without debate do it without fighting do it without struggling if you're in the children church section do what you are doing without disputing and without murmuring and without debate without struggling with the leadership in the church if you're in the youth ministry do everything you do with a free mind that you just love the lord and you love the youth ministry and you are, there's no disputing there's no murmuring and there's no aggressive kind of debate and there's no struggling with the leadership in the church do everything without murmuring without disputing what's your mind what's your heart and help us to lead these young people this young mind into the light and if you're leading them into the light you're leading them to live a sincere life an honest life you're not teaching them to riot when i say riot you need to understand routing takes many forms routing is not just when you carry banners and carry posters and carry sticks you know there are people have you heard of you know workers that just sit down at home they don't fight just a sit down strike have you heard of prisoners that will not eat and they go on hunger strike they don't fight and they don't carry placards but they just sit down and they don't eat anything and they just want to register their opinion whatever they want to the ruling body don't do that don't do that and don't teach the young people either to do that you know to sit in a particular way or to stand a particular way or to make some signs don't teach these young people life of darkness is the way of the world if you are ministering in the campus section the same thing let's see i just told you in the afternoon or morning that we put this state over here go to this place 
this national overseer, go to this place. The campus ministry is under the leadership of the general representatives, part of the church. If we make any reorganization and we say now the leadership of the campus in this uh, southwest, this is the person. The leadership in northeast or northwest or middle bed or south, south or southeast, this is the person. And that's not the reason to riot. That's not the reason to then, you know, stop all the programs. That's not the reason not to make the publicity for your programs and say when the leadership sees that you know this is not a working and we used to be five thousand in our campus congress before now when they go and give him report that they are now 870 and they have gone from five thousand to 870 he will understand we are not going to talk we're not going to debate that's royalty it's a way of sending a message across what we used to do and were effective we will not do it now to show the leadership we are not happy with the new leadership don't do that let's be light and you do everything without murmuring without disputing you know rioting even if it's quiet rioting silent rioting diplomatic rioting psychological rioting it's not all right it's not according to the word of god that you come with your heart and with your soul and you want to serve the lord when you were called into the campus ministry you didn't join the campus ministry because of that leader and if that leader has something we want to correct if the whole system has something to correct that's all right I want to take you to heaven it's not just to have the identity this is deeper life campus fellowship who needs that but just to love the lord and to serve the lord and that there are sinners in the villages who send people there there are sinners on the campuses who send people there there are sinners in the schools who send people there there are sinners everywhere sending people there. that that's what matters it's not who is leading them let's understand and let us come with our hearts this is a congress if i didn't talk about all this if i just talk theory to you and just quote this verse and this verse and this verse you are the light of the world and i didn't tell you the implication of being light in the world you wouldn't understand i will still go back to this psychological diplomatic kind of priority it says in verse 14 do all things without murmurings and without disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Among whom ye shine, ye shine as lights in the world. You know, see all these uh, lights here. Look up for a moment. Look up, look up. Have you seen the light? You know, I, I'm so impressed about these lights if we said we're starting at 6 30 in the morning you know the lights are on if we change our mind and then instead of starting at 6 30 we start at 7 all these lights they just keep on there just shining that's just their duty you can change your mind you can change your program you can alter everything you may say you want to eat now you may say you want to pray now you may say you want to do any other thing now whatever you want to do here we are we are at your service not to shine that's the life of the child of God. You are in the church. I'll say, Lord, I surrender my talent. I surrender my skill. I surrender everything that I have. I'm here as light to shine. They remove this bulb and they put it here. No grudges. Get there and shine. They remove you from there. They take you to the kitchen. That bulb, get there and shine. They remove you from the kitchen they take you to the hostel no problem go there and shine silently without any struggle without any mom without any debate without any disputing that's light and it is as we shine like that and we're shining in this world and we do not mind about position about office about whether the change program or the change leadership or whatever it is just shine in verse 16 holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain that's what the lord wants us to do just keep on shining first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 5 ye are all the children of light and the children of the day 
We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Let us swap the day. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For an helmet, the hope of salvation. First John chapter 1, verse 5. First John chapter 1, reading from verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. What does that mean to walk in darkness? It means to cover yourself with darkness and you live in secrecy. Let's say, for example, those of us who are men here, we're together. And those of you who are married, that's great, that's wonderful. And for a man to walk in darkness is for a man to, you may be doing something, it may not even be sinful what you are doing. But you keep it away from your wife. That's walking in darkness. You call a sister in the fellowship. It's not that you want to call. We're not even talking about sin. We're not talking about adultery. We're not talking about fornication. We're not talking about any bad sin at all. But, uh, dear sister, come. I see that you have financial problem. Now, please. I want to give you this amount of money. My mind is clear. I don't want to, I'm not asking for anything, any favor, anything from you. I just want to help you. But, please. If uh, my wife happens to discuss with you, don't ever open your mouth to tell my wife. Don't tell my wife. This is just between me and you. No sin, no fornication, but you are walking in darkness. Why wouldn't your wife know if you are walking in the light? Why wouldn't your wife be able to part, be party to it? That's a woman. And you are giving the money that belongs to the family to that woman. Why wouldn't your wife know? Don't walk in darkness. Make everything plain. Are you afraid you cannot convince your wife? If you told her, will she so disagree with you? And you don't have a way of convincing one another, my wife can. This particular sister, I think we should help her. She needs money. She needs her help. Even if your wife will say no, you are the man. You should be able to intelligently talk to your wife to say, Ah, my wife, why are you saying no? You know, I could have done this without telling you, but if I did that, I'll be walking in darkness. But I'm going to tell you, this is the reason why, this is the reason why, this is the reason why. And actually, I'm telling you because I don't want to give the money to her myself. This is the money, please. You are a woman. Give it to her as a woman. That's walking in the light. When there is no secrecy, when there's nothing hidden, there's no hidden agenda. And everything is very plain. That's how we are to live our lives. Isn't that a peaceful lie? And you have not said, done anything, and then you, have, you, you see the woman, maybe the other, the following week, talking to your wife, and you are passing by. What are they talking about? Is she telling my wife? What's my wife asking her? You will not have all that kind of troubled mind if everything was in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. If you hear anything about your leader, walk in the light. Come to your leader. Go to your leader, to your state overseer. Don't, don't do all this, uh, you know, backhanded kind of thing. That's walking in darkness. You know, come here. This, our region overseer, is a bad person. Why are you telling another person? Go and tell the overseer himself. But you know, I don't want to get involved. But you know, you need to write to Lagos, the headquarters. And tell the GS, what will I write? You don't know it's a bad man. No, it's our pastor now. I enjoy his messages. In fact, the other day when he, when he preached, I cried like a baby. And I saw the face of this. Shut up. Cry like a baby how? This man. See, he does this, does this, does this. Then you change his mind to convince him that his pastor, who is the only one that can lead him to heaven, you change his mind to hate his pastor. And then you tell him, this is what to write. 
Then he rides to Lagos. And you stay at the background in the dark. And then you push the other people. They are the people to do the right and you are walking in darkness. If you say you are in the light, walk in the light. If you know anything wrong, go to your overseer, go to your pastor and say with all respect, sir, it looks like you know you are forgetting our need. The way you are preaching our days, it's like you know you are fighting with us and this and that. Lay it very plain before that overseer. That's walking in the light. And if you're going to write at all to Lagos, you will write, you will make a copy. You will not post it to your overseer. You will go directly to your state overseer or the, or the region overseer pastor. You know, I've come here to you before and I told you this and this. And it looks like because I am too small and you can't understand me. Now, I've written to our father in the Lord in Lagos. This is the copy of what I wrote. If, they, if, my, if our father in the Lord in Lagos, if he calls you and he said somebody write, Sir, it is me that wrote. And this is a copy of what I wrote. That's walking in the light. Then you will be able to speak to us. Ah, ah, why did you write this? And then he'll take those points one by one, one by one, and clear it. And if you're clear, if everything is and, ah, Pastor, if I had come to you before I wrote that letter, I would have known. Now that you have told me, I write another letter. Then you write another letter. Make it very clear. I am sorry, headquarters because i wrote against our pastor everything is clear to me now i am the one at fault i misunderstood our pastor that's walking in the light but you know all these walking in darkness and all these uh, secretive thing or coming to see the agent superintendent did the overseer know you are coming to see me no he doesn't know if he knows he will not give me a letter to see you why will he not give you a letter to see me because he knows what we are going to discuss there you are walk in the light radiant christian living honesty faithfulness frankness so that you know you are a child of light if we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, you will walk in the light. Your life will change. Your attitude will change. And your method of getting points across, your method of trying to change other people, that method will change. Because now you'll walk in the light. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You are free. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which sin is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past. And the true light now shineth. He that says he is in the light and hateth his brother. He that says he is in the light and hateth his brother. Uh, do you know that hatred is coming in little by little? You went to the marriage committee for his sister. You heard another person went to the marriage committee for that same sister. That's all right. There's no reason to hate one another for that. Maybe he is wrong. Maybe I'm right. I've gone to the marriage committee. Those are men of God and women of God there. If he is wrong and I'm right, they'll tell him. The Spirit of God will make them find out. If God knows that that sister belongs to you, the Lord will know how to talk to them. He will reveal his mind and reveal his will. There will be a Gamaliel there that will stand up for you. And say, ye men of Israel, be careful what you do. Look at this, look at this, look at this. When you are facing God, you are walking the light. We don't need to hate one another. Because two, three people went to the Maya committee. Anybody can be wrong. Maybe you are wrong. And that other brother is right. And if it comes out that you are wrong, praise the Lord, that's all right. That's not the end of the road. We don't commit suicide spiritually and kill ourselves spiritually and lose our salvation because of getting married, walk in the light. 
If you are in the light, you'll not hate one another for any reason. What are you fighting on? Those who are married now, if you were to interview them, some of them went through the same difficulties you are going through now. But eventually they got married. God's time is the best. Am I right? Why hurry? All this running and running and struggling. But in verse 9, he that says is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I told in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are now in the light. You live a radiant Christian life and you show forth, you shine forth every time the marvelous light of the gospel was the reward. Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. If your life is lived in radiant Christian living, shining forth, you influence other people. And that influence on other people will make you to also shine forever and ever in the, like stars of heaven. Christians like light have a ministry of influence. What kind of influence? Number one, placed where it is, its influence can be best used and felt. On a hill. A city that is set on a hill. That is where the Lord has placed you. Understand? That's the best place for you to be at this time. And there you are to manifest the light and influence all the people around you. Or on a candlestick or in a passage you are reading unto a shining to all unto all in the house number two light has different strengths some lights are strong some lights are weak some lights are bright some lights are dim lights have different strengths and depending on the number of people you want to influence for example look up here you see this kind of light light here that's so bright we don't put that in our bedroom you don't need that in your bedroom appropriate light on appropriate place and those lights having different strengths when you have a crowd the more people you have to influence the brighter the greater should be the strengths of that light and if you have you know a community of people you have a larger number of people then you know your light is to shine and influence them number three some places in the world are brightly lit others are dimly lit what here for example now all these our halls halls one to seven if we take all the lights in all the halls and we put them over here and then all the other places are dark and only this place is bright all those lights will not be too useful because you see light understand light doesn't need light but darkness needs light this place is well lit enough now and all the other halls they need all those lights to remain there so that the people in those halls will be able to have the light that they need what i'm saying is this in nigeria here 
in every local government, in every region, in every stage, in every city, in every village almost, we have the lights of the gospel there. And all the lights, they want to remain here in Nigeria. But we have all these other countries there where they do not have as much light of the gospel as we have. Why don't you remove some of these lights and put over there where the place is dim and remove some here and put over there. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you remove some people from Ogo State and remove from Osho State and from Oyo State and from Ondo State and from AKG and from Kwara State. Pick one or two here, one or two here. If I pick two fluorescent balls out of each of these halls, you will not even feel it you'll still be well lit enough and then i take those fluorescent tears i go and put them where we don't have light and then i go to the southeast and i take a, a few from Anambra, a few from Mendung, a few from Ebonyi, and a few from abia and a few from emo and then when i remove two or three of your leaders there of the lights there you will still have enough light you'll still be all right and then i put them in another hall in another country i go to the south south and each of those places just give me about two or three there then i go to the middle belt i go to the northeast i go to the northwest i go to ghana where we have a lot of members there to and leaders there i pick one or two here and send them to where we need more light if all the lights stay in one place you will overshine and it's not useful in fact sometimes if the light is too bright and you concentrate all the lights in one spot it will uh, enjoy your eyes remove some of them send them away and then the other places can have light and that's why we do what we do and sometimes when you make all these transfers and you remove just one or two out of a stage and then you remove one or two out of there and then you send them where the needs are there are people that i don't understand when jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and all the lies they want to remain in one hall it should not be it cannot be it will not be amen. give me a good amen, amen. Ah, you women saying amen i might pick your husband to go and you have to follow along <laughs> and then it's when i will know your amen you know when when i'm preaching i'm saying by the grace of god this is a new year i'm picking a man there i'm picking a woman there and i'm picking and you're going to go there because the spirit say amen then i finish the preaching say just a second they call me brass one so and then they call me. i say how are you you say fine i say now you are not in your seat anymore you are in such and such a place oh me instead of amen oh me <laughs> everybody say amen. amen give a good amen. amen and if i call you at the end of the message it will still be amen god bless every one of you i come to point number three renewed consistent life renewed consistent life we're looking at matthew chapter five Matthew chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 15 neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house it giveth light to all that are in the house the Lord wants us to shine consistently in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 proverbs 4 verse 18 here the word of god makes it clear but the past of the just is as a shining light are there people who have been justified here i said are there are people who have been justified here cleansed with the blood of jesus and heaven looks at you and it says that's just that's just your past then shall shine and it will shine the past of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. What I want you to take home with you is the Lord has brought you into the light. 
you are not living in the light you will not shine less and less as you grow older in the lord you will shine more and more in isaiah chapter 60 isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you arise and shine your light has now come the glory of the lord has now risen upon you and then we're told in verse 20 your sun shall no more go down yeah. neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the lord shall be thy everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended thy people shall all be righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hand that i may be glorified as you are here today we're, we're, we're getting ready to go we're leaving tomorrow a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation i the lord will hasten it in his time your time has come you're going back home and you are going to shine rise up on your feet arise and shine promise the lord you're going to shine no more darkness no more works of darkness no more secrecy no more insincerity no more hypocrisy no more works of darkness but now light in the lord light in the lord ye are the light of the world all right sunshine ye are the light of the world influence others around you to shine as light in whichever way you are walking every area of the world reflect the mind of christ reflect the influence of christ reflect the grace of christ reflect the light of christ he that followeth after him will not walk in darkness but shall have the light of day let your influence on other people lead them to righteousness and holiness don't put up their light don't introduce darkness to their lives let them shine children of god are children of light and their influences are proper their influences are righteous on other people there's still change and true transformation in their lives they have been transformed from darkness unto light from hypocrisy unto sincerity from righteousness to righteousness those are the real children of god hypocrites are walking in darkness those who have hatred murmuring debate disputing they are walking in darkness rise and shine as children of light have you experienced that radical change that radical transformation and you say that truly you are reflecting the light of christ light eliminates darkness are you as light eliminating darkness in the lives of other people eliminating the darkness of ignorance the darkness of sin can you say you have such a powerful positive influence on other people because of you because of your life because of your example they stop doing evil and they come to do right and you say that light enlarges and enlarges a person's vision the people who associate with you you enlarge their vision in serving the lord or do you deem their light 
put all their light, influence them to stop living righteously. Light reveals the truth, opens up the truth. Are you like that? Light, light guides us in the way we ought to go, directs us, leads us along the right path. Is your life leading others? In the past, they ought to go. Path of righteousness. The path of holiness. Does your life make people to differentiate between right and wrong? Or people looking at you now, they are confused. They don't know what is right or wrong anymore because of influence upon them. Light warns other people of danger. Does your life warn other people of backsliding? The danger of sinning and the danger of going back and the danger of perishing. Does your life warn them? Light protects us from stumbling, from falling, from injuring ourselves. Does your life prevent other people from stumbling does your life actually help them to avoid falling shine forth shine forth with the light of the gospel shine forth with the light of righteousness and holiness shine forth shine more and more shine not less and less more and more 